So I am pretty excited for this episode today. We are sitting down with Kurt Rhodes. He has been on the podcast before, but he is one of the owners of Clear Title right here in Palm Harbor, Florida. And he's also a local. He grew up here in Palm Harbor, um, moved here from Texas at an early age, but grew up here uh, when Palm Harbor was really nothing on the map, but a bunch of orange groves and small roads. So we're going to chat with him about his experience growing up in Palm Harbor, what it was like growing up then, and what has changed um, during his time uh, growing up here in Palm Harbor. So let's get into it. Welcome to another episode of Palm Harbor Local. I'm your host, Florida native and real estate ninja, Donnie Hathaway. You know, I started this podcast because I'm extremely passionate about connecting you with the people and the local businesses that make Palm Harbor so special. Palm Harbor, Florida is a great place to live, work, and play. It has everything you could dream of, from the food, the outdoors, the lifestyle, to the people in the community. I wanted to create a podcast that connected the community and inspired everyone to live better. To join this community and stay up to date on all things Palm Harbor, visit my website, it's palmharborlocal.com, and sign up there to join the locals. And remember, together, we keep Palm Harbor local. So welcome back for, this is your second podcast, Kurt. Second. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate the invite. So we, um, so uh, we've so we known each other for, for, I guess, a couple of years now? Probably about three, four years. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've obviously have heard that you grew up in, in Palm Harbor, <laughs> yes. but we've never really talked about it and kind of um, gone into that. So that's what we're going to do here today on, on today's episode of the podcast is dive into just a little bit more about your experience growing up in Palm Harbor. So why don't we start way back at the beginning? <laughs> what yeah. year was that? Almost, yeah, exactly, <laughs> 1974. Uh, yeah. And and what was that like? And and uh, just kind of like, yeah, it started at the well, beginning. Well, picture US-19 yeah. as a one-lane road. No. One lane going in, one lane going out. Orange groves on the south side, orange groves on the north side. That's what it was like. It was yeah. barely any neighborhoods, barely any restaurants, a couple of convenience stores here and there. Um, and that stretched all the way from pretty much, I'm going to say, Clearwater into all the way up to north of Tarpon Springs. Crazy. That was, I mean, obviously it's more than a one-lane road, but yeah. I grew up in Spanish Oaks just off of um, now Belcher and Curlew. Yeah, because Belcher wasn't there, right? So, what was the neighborhood like then? There was well, just a couple of houses. Yeah, the, uh, my parents built the eighth house in Spanish Oaks. Okay, it was a two-story uh, home, and what the interesting thing about it was, uh, where on US nineteen, there's a Taco Bell in Palm Harbor. Yeah, that used to be the home of the KKK. They used to burn the cross there. Crazy. Every Saturday night. What year was that? Was in the seventies. That was in the seventies. Wow. Um, eventually, they got kicked out. I think it was nineteen eighty one. Yeah. Um, and they said, "Hey, you need to find a new place." Yeah. More or less. Um, but I remember when my parents built that house. There wasn't a lot of two story homes there, and I always used to get up on the second story, and you could see, see the cross out there. Wow. being uh, burned. Wow. Which is very bizarre, you know, because I was what. You know, probably you know between four and eleven years old, then. so I didn't really understand what that all meant. But mm-hmm. I just realized, wow, my gosh, you know these these neighborhoods are starting to pop up a little bit, and Palm Harbor starting to grow. And I remember downtown Palm Harbor, it was they had a, I think it was called the Palm Harbor Bank, which is was across the street from um, uh, downtown Palm Harbor. I'm trying to think of the restaurant Thirsty Marlin. Oh, okay. That used to be. The Palm Harbor Bank. Bank. They used to be, quote unquote, the bank that everybody banked at. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's like one bank in Pinellas County. Right. So if you looked at Thirsty Marlin on one side and you had Palm Harbor Bank on the other side, you could look right through it and see the Gulf of Mexico. Crazy. So I see pictures now and again at certain places, certain restaurants, and they show these pictures back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I'm like, wow, I can remember those days. Yeah. And nothing... From the water, from looking at the water, nothing's really changed. It's everything 
like mm-hmm. all the islands out there, they haven't yeah. really changed that much. Yeah. You know, they have these little garbage islands they put on for dredging or what have you. But yeah. coming back this way on land, it's it's amazing how much has changed from restaurants to hospitals and neighborhoods. And now you look at Palm Harbor and it's there's there's nowhere to go. Right. There's Every, barely it, any land it, left. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy how much. And really, it's, you know, I guess that's 50 plus years now or 50 ish years. Almost. Yeah. But it's. It's not really like a long time to like how much development has has taken place and how much like the county has changed over that time, um, which is it's crazy. But so you're um, did your parents, did they kind of grow up here or how did they how, where do they? Um, well, I'm from? originally from Arlington, Texas. OK, so my dad was going to school in Texas, okay. he finished his degree, came down here. He worked for Sperry. If anybody remembers what Sperry was like, that's Unisys, now Lockheed Martin. In Oldsmar, oh, wow. off of Tampa Road. Okay, so and that was the only thing out there. Literally, for, I mean, it, it seemed like where we lived in Spanish Oaks to where my dad worked, there was just maybe a couple convenience stores here yeah. and there, but everything again, everything was orange groves. Yeah, and I, I remember the one thing I specifically remember about orange groves was, and I had a motorcycle back then, and I was I, I was chased regularly by guys in these big huge trucks. They used to. Um, run up and down the rows with saw guns because they didn't want people stealing their inventory because oh. of the oranges, right? But they had these big, massive trucks, uh, like 18 wheelers, open 18, uh, 18 wheelers, and all they threw all the oranges in. And they just run these trucks right down the aisle, and you have these guys picking off oranges, throwing them in. Yeah. By hand, by, uh, by hand. Crazy, yeah. And it was, it was nuts. It's like, wow, look at these guys go. I mean, day in and day out, in the amount of oranges, because that's the one thing you would always would see it, come yeah. off these little side roads, these big, massive trucks, and you're like, oh, my gosh, how many oranges can that truck even hold? And oranges are flying out. They're bouncing yeah. down the road <laughs> because they're, they're overfilled and whatever. I, yeah. I just specifically am remembering that. Crazy. So uh, riding around on your motorcycle. Riding around my motorcycle, getting chased by guys on trucks, trying to protect their inventory. It's like, I'm not, I'm, you know... 12, 13 years old or so, 14 years old. And, yeah. and I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't want oranges. I just want to ride in the orange groves because, hey, no one's bothering me. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, the The law enforcement never really worried about motorcycles back then. Okay. You know, I think in the late, you know, early 90s, then it became a problem because you have all these neighborhoods and, yeah. you know, those motorcycles are loud and what have you. So yeah. I, I had to get rid of it. Yeah, that's true. Like if you, I mean, a lot of the homes and, and neighborhoods were developed you know, in the eighties, right? Mid eighties, yeah. early eighties. Yep. Um, early nineties. Yeah. They all, um, Seaver's landing, um, Piper's oh, yeah. meadow, yeah. which is right next door. So yeah. our neighbor right down the street, which was just outside of Spanish Oaks was Tom Seaver. Okay. And he made Seaver's landing and okay. made a fortune. Yeah. Anyways, it's just amazing how many, t- how many neighborhoods just started popping up. Yeah. Cause it's really what I remember was there's Panian Acres, there was um, Spanish Pines, mm-hmm. Spanish Oaks, and the next neighborhood that I thought, that I remember it was even close, was Westlake Village. Oh, okay. And that was built in like the late 60s, if I'm not mistaken, okay. early 70s. Yeah. It was just before ours. Yeah. But then everything started in the mid to um, late 70s, early 80s. You really started to see Palm Harbor just really yeah. grow. Yeah. 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 So what about, um, what about the water? Like, did you guys, were you guys boaters? Did you at that time? What's up Palm Harbor? It's your host, Donnie Hathaway. If you were looking to stay up to date with all things Palm Harbor, then visit my website. It's palmharborlocal.com. Super simple. You can sign up there, join the locals where I'll be sharing more information on local events, local history, and what's happening in Palm Harbor. You know, I really want to create and add more value to you as a listener for spending your valuable time tuning into my podcast. So join me there, keep listening, and remember, together, we keep Palm Harbor local. Uh, Yeah, we were boaters. And it, again, you go out on the water and you go down to Clearwater Beach. The landscape is totally different uh, yeah. in Clearwater Beach because it's yeah. more commercialized down there. Right, 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 yeah. Um, the big, huge bridge that used to come over. Yeah. Well, now they, they used to, well, they, that was now. But before, they had a bridge that was there since, I think, the 20s, if I'm not mistaken. And it was sinking. 
And that's the reason why they had to get rid of that. So I remember old, like in high school. It bridge. Yeah. It that's all the bridge rusted we used to ride. Oh, it was brutal, man. That yeah. thing was so slow. Yeah. You know, because again, there was only one way in and one way out of Clearwater Beach. It was like, yeah, it was two lanes or one lane. Yeah. I think it was two lanes when I was in high school. It maybe. maybe it was two lanes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there was no sand key entrance yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And that's how Clearwater was. But if you go more north up into like Palm Harbor and Dunedin and and Tarpon Springs, all those islands out there, they haven't really changed. Yeah. They really haven't changed. They have these little, you know, uh, dredge islands because when they used to dredge, they put these islands on. So, and one's like a sanctuary now for birds okay, on yeah. these little pop islands next yeah, to yeah. the uh, channel. But, um, yeah, from the, from the water, there's not much change. Even like Honeymoon Island. Yeah. Um, uh, Caladesi. Mm-hmm. I mean, calories he's got a whole bunch of docks and stuff like that but it really the landscape really has not changed yeah. just less people visiting back then less right people yeah <laughs> yes, that's by far a little quieter on the water yeah. well you know interesting you say that because i think dunny and palm harbor are so close to clearwater but i think they're a lot quieter than the clearwater scenery yeah because uh, we go down there by boat and it is a zoo yeah I mean, there's cars going every different direction. There's people honking. There's restaurants, you know, right on top of restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just see the, all the vacationers with their yeah, you know, farmers' yeah. hands, and yeah. <laughs> you know, and they don't, you know, they don't belong here, but yeah. they come here. So, a lot, I think a lot of that is taken to the the Clearwater side. Yeah, which, I would. I think that's what draws everybody in, right? And then they, you know, maybe they some people can afford to stay in Clearwater Beach, and then, and then some people can't, right? So they stay in the outskirts right. of Dunedin, Palm Harbor, and that sort of right. stuff. But if you go to down to downtown Clearwater, which I did a couple of weeks ago, just to kind of go bar hopping and what have you, mm-hmm. you can see how many vacationers there are. Yeah. But if you go to like the Safety Harbor, you go to like Dunning bars, you go to the Palm Harbor bars, you see more of the locals. More you locals, don't, yeah. You don't see. You can kind of look at that person and go, okay, well, that guy's from Boston. Yeah, or yeah. this guy's a local. Yeah. And it, it, there's a, such a, and they're only, what, three or four miles apart? Yeah, apart. Two yeah. miles. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um. So what about like so? What did you do as a kid like growing up? Like what was there to do for fun? Riding your dirt, riding your riding dirt bike. Riding my dirt bike. Yeah, that was one thing. Um. The one thing that really stuck out, like when I got to, I was almost thirteen years old. Yeah. Um. We knew that they were gonna build a middle school. Okay. And everybody was like, "Yay! We finally have a school that's near <laughs> in Palm Harbor that's worthwhile." Is is the Palm Harbor Middle School? And that was built in 1983. Okay. And it was amazing how big of a, a spectacle it really was. Like, oh, yeah, all right. We don't have to, our school is going to be right here, right in our own backyard. Right? Yeah. And it was 2.1 miles away. So I had, to, no, I was 1.9 miles away. So I had to ride my bike. I couldn't get the bus. So I'm like, ah, oh, that sucks. I got to ride my bike to yeah. school every day, <laughs> which I did. You know, back then it was, it was, it was a cool thing to do, right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what other things kind of uh, stick out. I think it, so, so going back to the school, where did you yeah. go to school before that? Where was the? the I went to Palm school? Harbor Elementary School. Okay, I went. To, so there was that was Palm Harbor Elementary. Is that? Um, I think that's off Fourteenth that? Street. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, I also went to Ozona Elementary okay. School, Ozona was around which there. was okay. That's way off in the water there by Orange Street, off of Orange Street, I believe. Yep. So yeah, Tampa Road. And, yeah. yeah. So it's interesting of. Uh, uh, how long I've been here, you know, for mm-hmm. I'm counting 48 years, yeah. you know, I'm, 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 I'm 52 now. So I've, uh, been through a lot around here. Yep. Yep. Crazy. Yeah. So what about, um, what did you, yeah, I mean, it's so much has changed, right? But, oh my gosh. but what did you, what did you enjoy about, um, Palm Harbor and, and like the way it used to be versus like the way it is now? Well, I think it, when there's always two sides of a coin, right? But I think from a, um, when we were growing up, your group of friends, we had everywhere to go, more or less, right? We could drive everywhere. You you weren't bothered. It wasn't much traffic. Uh, you don't have to worry about stoplights. You could get somewhere real quick. You know, we had the local places that we really liked to hang out at. Yeah. And now it's completely the opposite. Now you have the, the traffic is dreadful wherever we go around here, right? Yeah. There's so many, but there's so many different restaurants. There's so many different choices now that you can do. 
But I think the big thing I just miss, I'm I'm kind of um it, if my next home was out in the middle of Brooksville with five or six, seven acres and I had a few horses and a little pond, would I take it? I would. I think I would. Yeah. You know, I've always said, Oh, I'd love to live on the water, I'd love to live on the beach and have a nice seawall and this, that, and the other. But you know, I have some friends that live on the water and it's not all cracked up what they say. Yeah. Um, you're always feeling wind. I'm not a big wind person. Yep. And the wind blows, it seems like it blows like 80% of the time. Right. You know? <laughs> so when you get more inland, you don't feel it as much. Yeah. But you feel the elements when you're out there. 100%. Yeah. It's what's one, it's kind of like a fa- vacation. You know, mm-hmm. we have a boat, we go on on Sundays, we bring it back, and then we'll go back the next Sunday. <laughs> it's yeah. just, you know, it's like yeah. <laughs> it's, you don't live out there seven days a week. So that's the one thing I kind of see myself in, in the difference yeah. of living on the water versus living out in the middle of nowhere when you have, you know, five or six lots between two houses. Yeah. It is um, it is interesting because I kind of have the same like thought process on like, you know, moving out on the outskirts of, you know, Pinellas County or whatever to have more land, more right. space. It's quieter. But then on the downside, like there's there's less to do. You know, there's not all the restaurants and stuff that you have, the, right. good, the good food and everything, um, activities, parks, all that kind of stuff. Like you miss out on all of that. Yeah. But um, there is something to be said about, you know, being, you know, you know, not seeing 10 houses when you walk outside your back, your backyard. Right. You know, Yeah. I think it just comes down to, you know, what do you like? What do you enjoy? Do yeah. you like being in the, in, the, in the middle of the mix or do you like the outskirts to where you can drive to? you know, getting in the middle of the mix. So, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I don't enjoy like the massive crowds, but, you know, I, I live off of um, Nebraska there and to go down to po- downtown Palm Harbor takes about three minutes, right? Yeah. Three right. lousy minutes. But it's, it's the, um, it's the local restaurants. It's the local um, seafood that you get. Um, and, and the locals that are hanging out there on a regular basis. I think that's, one of the caveats I like. Yeah. You know, and again, as, as I'll bring it up again, we look back at Clearwater Beach is how commercialized that's been. Right. And going down there and it's, and the restaurants are just, everything is super packed. The hotels, even convenience stores, going into a yeah. convenience store is like, <laughs> why is there 12 people in yeah. line here? <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow. I just need so, a bag of chips. Yeah. It's <laughs> two in the afternoon. Come on. I mean, really, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, huh? but, it's to each his own. What, what do you like? Yeah. Do you like that beach scenery with a lot of people around you, or do you want to be kind of by yourself and yeah. um, be able to spread your wings a little bit? Yeah. So. Yeah. True. Um, what do you see? And 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 I like the idea of like. I think that's what's great about Palm Harbor and Dunedin, right? They have those local businesses. Like they've been able to keep like you know, some of the commercial commercialized restaurants and uh, corporate restaurants and that sort of stuff, corporate businesses kind of out. And, you know, it's more mom and pop, yeah. small shops, local business owners. Um, that's what makes the, the town, you know, the, the cities, you know, I think unique in, in, in my perspective. I think you're dead on. Yeah. Donnie, cause I'm a member of the Palm Harbor chamber. Yeah. I'm a member of uh, Dunny North Rotary. Yeah. And even though these two entities really try to help, others um, uh, help the community out yeah um, it's it's interesting to see and I like like what you said is is keeping the more the corporates out of the way and letting the locals strive mm-hmm. and having their own business mm-hmm. like a pizzeria or um, you know an ice cream shop right it seems like when you get into those really deep down in the in the downtowns they thrive. They do. Yeah. I look at downtown um, Palm Harbor. Perfect example, right? You got Barfly and you got the fireside and yeah. you got the ice cream place next to it. And it's growing. Right. It's slowly growing. Right. And they're, they're packed too. They like are every, packed. Every weekend. It's so hard to get a parking spot. Right. Thank God I know the uh, CEO of the uh, to chamber. I can park my truck there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the best part because it's right there. Yeah. Because right <laughs> when you try to find parking, you had to go like three blocks to find a yeah. parking. It's not always great, but... You know, that's a good caveat to have, though. Yep. And the downtown is growing, too. It's cool to see, like, the new restaurants coming in, new buildings that are being built and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's also nice to understand where they're going 
in the future. Yeah. What are they? What are, what is downtown Palmer Palm Harbor trying to do? What is downtown Safety Harbor and in the Dunnings? Yeah. What are they? What are they ultimately trying to do? They're always trying to grow and and make sure that again these businesses are thriving. They're making money. Um, so our locals and you know sometimes they sprinkle in some visitors from out of town. Yeah. It's 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 doing well twelve months out of the year. It's it's hard to go to downtown Palm Harbor or downtown Dunneen or even Safety Harbor, and it's ever quiet. Right, right. right. I don't know if there's a day out there that it's very very quiet. Yeah, I I I, I don't see it. Yeah, and when, especially with all the events and stuff that the cities are doing to attract more people and and just right. you know support the local businesses. I, that's what it goes back to. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, this has been fun, Kurt. I appreciate you doing this. Appreciate Absolutely. you sharing your Thanks for having me on and explaining a little bit more about Palm Harbor. Yeah. yeah. It start, my journey started in 1974 and it, it still continues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think about moving away? Like living, living you know, elsewhere? I, I'm glad you actually brought that up because yeah. I was thinking about talking about that. Yeah. Yes, I did. And I've had the luxury of, of traveling a lot of different places. Yeah. And I don't know if there's another place around this area that I could say, yeah, I'll, I'll move to. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't think it could. I, I, I don't think anything matches up to my liking. I like boating. I like fishing. I like the, 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 the local seafood around here. And uh, I don't know where else I could really go. I yeah. really don't. Maybe Austin, because I heard it's a fun place, but yeah. I'm not like a young guy anymore i'm like 52 right so yeah. i've already hit my peak i'm going downwards that's now, why so. you're going to brooksville <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly um, so yeah that's true i think um i think growing i'm so i grew up here too like in i grew up in old mars so speaking of Lockheed martin like right across the street from Lockheed martin okay. um but i think like you always as like a younger kid or younger adult like in my opinion, like maybe it's not true, but you always want to see like what else is out there. Like I want to move somewhere else. I want to live in a different city or whatever. Yeah. And I've had the same thoughts, but then I, I come back to like, man, this place is really cool to to live here. There's so much going on. There's so yeah. much growth happening and a lot of good things happening. So it's like, I always come back to like, yeah, it's just a great place to live. You know, why would you leave? We live in a, in a tri-county area as I look at it. Yeah. North and South of us. I don't know too many places that can, can, can beat it. Yeah, it gets a little hot here and for like three months out of the year, four months out of the year. But for eight months out of the year, it's 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 perfect. Yeah. I think our weather is great. It's beautiful. You know, it's like it was just when I came in here, it was pouring down rain and, <laughs> and now it's probably blue skies outside. Yeah. And so that's what I love about it. You, these thunderstorms move in and out so yeah. quick and they're gone. And within 45 minutes, you're like, OK, it's like another day. Yeah, <laughs> yep, exactly. I like it. Yeah. So cool, man. Well, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Donnie. Appreciate it. Thank you again for listening to another episode of Palm Harbor Local. I really hope you got a ton of value out of today's episode. Now, if you're looking to connect with the guest or just get more information on the episode, then you can check the description below. I'll have all the links in the episode as well as a link back to my website. It's palmharborlocal.com where you can stay up to date on what's going on with the podcast and sign up there to join the locals. Let's get after it this week. And remember, together, we keep Palm Harbor Local. Local.